Good morning, it's Sue Gay. Someone's asked me if I would do a video on painting on fabric, so here you go. First thing you're going to do is get any kind of fabric that you want. The main thing is to wash it and not to use fabric softener when you're washing it. You may throw it in the dryer, not a problem. You can iron out the wrinkles if you like. But the main thing is no fabric softener at all. There's two train of thoughts when it comes to painting on fabric. One is to use your ordinary acrylic paint, which in that case you would use a product called a textile medium. This one's made by Folk Art. You would add it to your paint. So what I do is I usually try to base coat a little bit with the textile medium and then I add my color to it. Today I'm going to use the So Soft paints. They come in many, many colors. This is a uh, 1.15 fluid ounce bottle. It also has its own um, fabric medium. So I'm going to be using that. Just make sure, because it's kind of confusing, because they both look the same. The white and the fabric medium looks exactly the same. So make sure that you are getting um, the fabric medium and not mixing it up with your paint. The next thing that we're going to uh, look at is called an ident identical pen. This has got two tips, thicker and thinner. A fine Sharpie will do exactly the same thing. As long as it's a permanent Sharpie, you won't have a problem. The brushes that I used, I've had these for a while. These are uh, Folk Arts uh, Plaids Painting on Fabric Brushes. This is a rake. Then I've got flats, I've got some filberts, I've got an angle, and I have a script. I love these because they're stiff. When painting on fabric, you need an extremely stiff, stiff brush. So when you go to the stores and you're looking at the fabric paints, they'll be in a completely different section than where the acrylic paints are, and you want to make sure that you get stiff brushes. Don't use your ordinary brushes that you would normally use because it is going to damage your surface, not your surface, your, uh, your paint brushes. So I'm just going in here to my normal stash. I'll take out a script. Um, what else? I think in these I'm going to use a number eight. Um, I might use a three quarter. And I think that's pretty well going to be it for today. So I'll put those away. Sorry for the loud noise. So, next thing you have to do is trace your pattern, which I have already done. All I did is I went into the, uh, love this book. This book is Painting Flowers A to Z. Went in here, picked out a flower that I thought I'd like to paint, took the pattern, so what you're doing is you're placing the pattern inside. This is an old pillowcase. So the pattern the pattern is going to go inside and you're going to see it. Now you're going to ask me, well, what happens, Sue, if I want to paint on a dark denim? How am I going to see my pattern? Go to the store and buy what the quilters use to trace their patterns, but you want to make sure it's non-greasy. Then what you're going to do is you'll put your tracing non-greasy uh, quilt uh, transfer paper then you'll put your pattern on top and then you'll go ahead and you'll attach your pattern so it's not going to shift or move and then you're just going to go ahead and um, and trace out your pattern when you're done doing that you are going to slip underneath anything I like something like of a cardboard consistency because it'll soak up any excess paint that I have so unfortunately, I can't do this any better way than how I'm doing it. So I'm going to show you. I take these large clips. And I come back to this side. I make sure that it's very taut. Pull it tight. And I clip it. Now I flip it over and I'm ready to paint. Really should have another one in this corner but I only brought three so that's just gonna have to do. Okay so I'm going to squirt out my colors onto my palette. So I have paper towel, it's water cleanup, it's easy, 
not as difficult as you think. Uh, if you can paint acrylic, you can do this. So I'm going to wet all my brushes and then dampen them off on my paper towel. I'm going to now put some of the fabric medium on my palette. And I'm going to put some white. And I'm going to put some pink. And I'm going to put some dark green. You can pick whatever colors you want. I mean, it's going to be your whatever. Okay, let's get started. So, with my um, three quarter brush, I'm going to pick up the uh, fabric medium and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some fabric medium. If you go over the black, it's not a big deal because you can come back later and you can add it. It's almost like doing wet on wet. Sorry, I'm trying to get the lid off of something. Oh, did it. I usually put my fabric medium into something that's um, like a little cup or something because it's pretty runny. If you use too much, you will get it to uh, bleed. So just be a little careful when you're using the fabric medium that you're not putting too much. I'm not worried because I went over that black line because I can put that back in later. If you want to have a color, um, watercolor look, when you're done, you take a spritz bottle with some water in it. I like to use warm water instead of cold. It absorbs better. Now make sure that you're coming right down into here I'm ready to start picking up my pink. And this is how you paint on fabric. Not as difficult as you may think. Oh, went outside the line. So I'll come over here, make that, and then I'll put in my black again. Now, it's your painting. You can make this opaque. You can have it transparent. It's just all depends on how much paint you're picking up on your brush. So this particular one, because it's on the side, I just want it to be a soft pink. I don't want it to be really overpowering. So I only picked up pink when I started down here. And as you see, I'm just pulling more of the, um, the fabric medium through it. Here, I'm going to go a lot darker because after all, this is a flip. In my face on pattern that I have, I will do that a lot darker as well. You really should use different brushes for different things. If you are doing um, Oils, you really need to have a set of brushes just for oils. If you're doing acrylics, you need a set of brushes just for acrylics. You don't want to, um, and like I said to you before, the fabric, you want a really nice stiff brush. So here I'm coming up with a little bit of green. Don't mind that the pink is there. And I'm going to come and just pull, oh, I hope my head's not in the way. I kind of get carried away and forget about the camera. might come a little bit darker in here 
to pull up. I think I'm liking it a little bit darker better. Pull down. Okay. I'm gonna do my leaf. I'm putting my fabric medium. I'm using a dirty brush. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm just gonna base coat this in the dark green. And I'm gonna base coat this one. I'm gonna change down to a smaller brush just because it'll be easier. So what I like to do is I like to base coat my leaves first. People might think that this is more work. I'm gonna darken this a bit. There we go. Looks more like a stem. I like to base coat, and because this is so stiff, see how I can scrub it back and forth? If I was using a normal acrylic brush, it wouldn't work as well. Every time you see my me leaving the surface, I'm just dipping into my little container, and that's what I put it in. It's just a nice little uh, container because, like I said, it's very runny. I pick up a little bit of that, and I pick up my paint, and I come back, and I fill in. So you can make this as pastel or as vibrant as you would like. It's your choice. Like I said in the beginning, you will notice a difference. The so soft paints, when they're dry, they are, it's soft, it's not stiff. If you use ordinary acrylic, it will be stiff. You will notice a big difference. Once the paint is on, it's not coming off. You're gonna let it dry for 24 hours and then you're gonna heat set it. Now you can heat set it two ways. You can turn the piece of fabric inside out and put it in the dryer, or you can take the um, iron inside out set the iron on it and go ahead and uh, iron it and that's heat setting and then the paint isn't going to move. Now again I went out of the lines there but I'm not too concerned about that. I'm going to let that dry for a little while and I'm going to go on to the, uh, the actual flower. So because the flower is a large flower I'm going to go back to my three quarter and I'm going to pick up my um, fabric medium and I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to base coat this in white. What I've done is I've made a little puddle onto my uh, palette of the fabric medium with the white paint and that's where I'm going when you when you don't see me. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to go right over the black. I'm not going to get too concerned. Like I said, I can come back. Oh, there's a hair. Now you could come back with the pen or you can come back with the ink. That is up to you. Uh, when I mean ink, I mean the paint, sorry. It's funny, you know, when we teach, we know what we wanna say, but then we just automatically assume everybody understands our language and we have to go right back to what it was like to be a beginner. If you are a teacher, it's good to take classes from different people and it pushes you out of your comfort zone. And then that gives you the appreciation of how your students feel when they are um, learning. And you know when they're saying to you, I can't do it, I can't do it, and you're going, yes you can. Now you know how they feel. Remember the white comes in down into here. This all gets filled. Well, let's just go right over the center. Doesn't matter. Remember, it's wet on wet. It takes a little while for it to dry, so you have a little bit of play time. So don't panic. Some people go out and buy the shirt boards to uh, paint on fabric. I'm very frugal, 
That's what my students like about me. I will use a piece of cardboard, a piece of Bristol board. Sometimes I'll even put um, the Glad Press and Seal underneath. And then that helps to um, not allow your paint to be moved around underneath. So it just depends on how much you want to spend. I'm going to add some white in here because I want to add some color. I'm going to come back and now I'm going to pick up my pink. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to pull it down. Try to get up as close to your black edge as you can get it. This is a touch, press, flick motion. Well, let me come over here and you'll see it better. Touch, flick. I don't go all the way into the center. I like to leave it a little um, streaky. And that's the look that you will get if you're doing the flick motion. Touch, bend. My aren't my hands in the way. I'm sorry. If I do it over here, you'll see it better. Okay, so I pick up paint, fully loaded. Touch it, bend it, flick it. Touch it, bend it, flick it. It's not going all the way in because then you're going to get a solid line, and that's not the look that we want on this. You can leave some of your white showing. Not a problem. It gives it more dimension. Always think of how something, I'm going to pick up some white here and flick back up. Always think of the direction of the growth of the petal. That is so, so important. I'm going to come back in my pink. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. Matter of fact, I have a contest going right now that I have a big announcement coming on April the 30th. And I am giving away one set of fabric painting brushes. So, if you want to get into painting on fabric, this would be a perfect opportunity because you don't have to go and buy the brushes. You just have to get some paint and some medium and start painting. Now I'm going to fill this in. I might make this really, really bright. Oh, too bright. I'll pick up some white and I'll tone that down. This is the trumpet part of the flower where it holds it all together. Then I'm going to pick up some of my green. Too much. And pull that up. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to add some white here. Some white here. Oh, too much. So when you make a mistake like that, I don't get all bent out of shape. I'll come back with my hot pink, pick it up, and pull it back in. Remember, please remember, direction is so important. Put a little bit of this lime. Ooh, that popped it, didn't it? Let's put a little bit up into here so they kind of look like they're from the same family. Come down on the stem. And I come back, pick up here, and really emphasize that pink right there. Maybe on this one as well. 
notice how I'm curving the brush. Okay, I'm going to come back to my leaves. I'm going to step down my brush in size. I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little bit of the green just to wet it a little bit. Now I'm going to pick up the softer green and I'm going to come in here and I'm pulling it in and pulling it out. Pull it in, pull it out. Pull it in, pull it out. You can add pink and I like to do that sometimes. It just gives a, I don't know, different look. It's a little bit too much pink for my liking so I just add a little bit of green. Pull it in, pull it out. Pull it out, pull it in. If you're finding that it's dragging, it's just probably because your paint underneath is dry. Pull it out, pull it in. It's not liking this so much. I'm going to come back. I'm going to pick up a script liner and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the veins. In the center, I'm going to pick up some yellow. And some lime green. And I'm going to just come in with my script liner. And I like using a script liner because it doesn't give me even looking um, little dots. They're all uneven because after all, as we're applying this, we, we have some um, more pressure than others. And add some white. Now I'm going to pick up some black. You're going to need a lot of the fabric softener, um, fabric softener, <laughs> the fabric medium, if you're going to come back and go over your lines. Go slow. I'm going to pull up some black lines in here. Now where I went over a little, I just took the line and I just made it a little wider. You don't have to do all of it. And if you were really good and you didn't go over the black line, you don't have to do any. I like to give my leaves a little bit of a curl on the end. Show you right here. Oh, there's a boo-boo. Oh, just wait a minute. Here, I'll just come out, pull some of these out. You can make them as long, short. I have a, I have a ripple in the fabric there, and that's why it's not giving me troubles. There we go. That's better. When you're creating these, notice how I'm thinking of shape. in 
here. I'm going to darken that one. And I'm going to darken this one. Really, the sky's the limit. You can, go, you can buy um, dimensional fabric paint, which is really neat if you want to outline your leaves. And I'll show you that in one minute. It really gives it a completely different look. I'm sorry if I'm boring you because this is taking kind of long. But this is really a video for anybody who's never really painted on fabric. If I had more clips, I wouldn't be pulling on my fabric. It would be pulled really taut. Again, pull these up. You can go to secondhand stores, get some pillowcases, practice on there. Like I said in the beginning, if you wanted to make this watercolor, you would wait finish your whole project and then come back and um, spritz the whole thing and it will start to, uh, it'll start to bleed whenever I teach a class and it's um, on fabric and my students go out they're always stopped and somebody will say wow where'd you get those and they'll go I did it oops my arm slipped <laughs> oh, too bad. really your side shouldn't be that thick but you get the gist of it I'm going to show you the um, the rake brush. You want this really inky, very, very thin. But when you're loading a rake brush, you need to see the teeth there. Perfect shot. So that you can see the teeth. So now you can just come in and create a very wispy look. don't have to do this I'm just showing you what different brushes now if you notice there I pushed too hard and that's because I didn't have enough paint on my brush if you have enough paint you can go forever see again not enough paint and too much pressure Oh, you know how your mother used to say to you, do as I do, do as I say, not as I do. So right here where I'm hitting it and it's too hard, like I say, it's just because I'm applying too much pressure on the piece. Don't forget to sign your pieces. I don't date mine, but I do sign them. Because I don't want somebody taking my piece and then saying to somebody, oh, look what I did. Because you know what, your stuff ends up who knows where. This is, this is sugar dust or diamond dust. All you're going to do is take it while everything is wet and you sprinkle it on. And it'll stay there when it's dried. You can put it on as thick or as thin as you like. Some people like it really thick. They want lots of bling. Remember, it's only going to stick to where it's wet. I'm going to now come on here with some gold. And this is um, dimensional fabric paint. And I believe this is made by Folk Art, I believe. Not 100% sure. What I do is I shake it down and I start off a little tiny bit down here just to make sure that it's going. I come here. This is where you can really start to emphasize your design. 
Make sure every once in a while you're wiping off the tip because you don't want a big glob. This is called gold, but there's a really pretty one that I'm going to show you in one minute. And it is my favorite. I'm pulling my lines. Don't forget, wipe off your tip. You're always pulling it away from you, never towards you. Always pull away. I'm going to emphasize the stem here. Here. Maybe a little bit up through here. A little bit through here. This is my favorite. This is called the dimensional as well, but this is Pitura um, textile and it's called ice sparkles. This is stunning. When this goes on, it's going on white, but when this dries, it will be transparent and it will pick up, air bubble, and it will pick up whatever colors um, are underneath. I did um, this on another piece the other day and I was so, so happy because I had no idea that it was going to turn this transparent ice into um, the color that it did. Make sure you keep shaking down your bottle because if you're getting air bubbles, that's what the problem is. Oh, I think we might as well do this one too. Bottle's almost empty. Remember, you're pulling away, never pushing towards you. Also, remember that you're also, um, um, Wiping off the tip so you don't get big, huge globs of paint. This bottle's almost done. I'm going to sign my name right here and I'm going to sign it with this because it will show after. There we are. We're done. Maybe a few up here. This is almost finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something new. I invite your comments. Please check me out on Facebook, also on YouTube, and I also have a um, website called Art at Home. That's A-R-T-A-T-H-O-M-E dot C-A. Thank you for watching and this is Sue Gate signing out.